Hello, this is Drogo Empedocles. I'm working on an essay currently uh, dedicated to my sponsors, including the one that I lost, uh, about climate change science theories. Um, I did lose a sponsor basically over the CO2 issue and uh, posting uh, rants about it on my personal page, which, you know, I draw a line to, uh, you know, from anyone, so... Basically, you know, my personal page is like the front door to my house. You know, I don't run up to my friend's front door and just cross out their welcome sign and, you know, graffiti it up. I pretty much try to respect uh, what people want to express on their own uh, doors or walls or pages and just do my own thing. So, uh, to Beamer, Ayla, Vim... And Tom, uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say about the issue currently, but I've prepared a little essay trying to explain some of the differences between uh, what's happening under the Trump regime uh, to the EPA, the National Park Service, and the Pentagon uh, climate science. Uh, you know, basically, although most of us that are rational thinkers think that the debate is over, uh, you know, clearly uh, it is a political issue due to corporatism. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, uh, basically differentiating between the main climate theory, which I call scientific climate change theory, and the minor climate change theory, which is usually used for people that um, believe that corporations should have more influence uh, in government than people. And that um, basically, I think even the minor theories advocated by libertarians that, that, that don't even know that it's a right-wing theory. So I think there, there are people that might claim to be independent or centrist on the issue, but really kind of fall into the the right-wing conservative camp of, of saying, oh, you know, nothing needs to change. We can keep polluting the earth and the pollution doesn't add up to, you know, a uh, an overall global uh, amount despite, you know, the increase of population and despite the, the evidence that uh, industrial, the industrial age of human civilization you know, seems to indicate by all accounts that, uh, you know, by the majority of accounts, that certainly the more that we affect our environment, the more our vi environment is affected. So there is a direct cause and effect. The more that we pollute our planet, the more our planet becomes polluted. And that, what does that pollution mean? That is what a lot of scientists try to understand. You know, what amounts of chemicals are toxic, what, which chemicals are toxic and to humans and other animals, and how those chemicals add up the molecules in the atmosphere and cause different conditions. And you know, even on other planets, they can compare, you know, when you have high CO2 levels, what that seems to do. And so um, some people will try to argue that, that scientists are wrong and not taking into account other factors, but I'll, I'll get into that. And of course, scientists themselves are often very skeptical people. That's why they like science, because they want to prove things through experimentation. So they will doubt things until they themselves and I'm, I'm, I'm very much this way, until they themselves, you know, feel like they have proof or evidence for something, or if they trust, uh, you know, the other, other scientists or people in science that are doing the work. So I'll just read this essay here. The main climate change theory I will call the scientific climate theory, presented by the majority of scientists, uh, that is artificial CO2 and other man-made, in addition to natural factors, are primarily contributing to overall global warming, 
which causes climate change in various ways, sometimes temporarily cooling during warm seasons, which seems like a contradiction, but it isn't, because the overall trend is warming according to annual temperatures, the averages, you know, worldwide. This consensus in science is supported primarily by centrist left-wing left wing and radical liberals uh, politically who believe that the time for debate is over and it should not be a political issue because it is true and not just a pin, an opinion. And I should add there also, uh, you know, atheists and independently minded people that don't even like labels at all. So, in other words, the majority of people that, that think about these things, uh, you know, that, you know, based on all the evidence, that is the main climate uh, change theory. The minor climate change theory, I will call the corporate climate change or climate theory, supported by extreme skeptics of science and government. And that is that environmentalists are lying about the data evidence to hide that most of it is naturally either being caused by solar irregularities or geotectonic magnetic seismic shifts and volcanic activity or both. And I've tried to listen to those theories as well. Uh, you know, even the angry rants that just seem very hypocritical to me. This is the side that defends those totally uninterested or ignorant in climate science as well, who doubt there are any problems with pollution that can affect global conditions. And I want to inject here that the the sponsor that I lost uh, was in the Navy and a, a weather meteorologist, and I kept challenging her, can you please present the evidence, you know, since you worked in that field, that can show me, you know, wh why the dominant theory of science and CO2 is wrong. And I, I never got that. I never really got any real evidence. It was usually just capital letters texting saying that I'm brainwashed by the government. So I'm going to address that because I don't feel that I'm brainwashed by the government or, you know, uh, anything else that I'm aware of regarding, uh, you know, what the reality of pollution is. Okay, so one of the issues that this minority climate corporate theory brings up is that storm flooding, which can often be from cold climate, uh, and heat droughts are opposites and should not both be results of global warming. This proposed paradox does not take into account the melting of the polar ice, which raises sea level, and the chaos that can result from this regarding flooding and more severe storms. Freak cooling periods in some areas, but overall prolonged intense heating of the global atmosphere. So, minor theories are usually supported by radical right-wing conservatives and libertarians, or uh, corporate centrists uh, that tend to play lip, pay lip service and don't want any action. Uh, regarding, um, you know, minimizing corporate pollution, who believe, uh, they believe that no one should interfere in the rights of corporations to pollute and are currently dismantling the EPA, National Park Service, and other branches of government uh, that, that, uh, that care about our environment under the Trump regime, as I said. So, to summarize, both of these theories agree that there will be more severe climate chaos like weather that is out of season um, in general. The scientific climate theory says that artificially caused CO2 pollution from industry and agriculture is mainly to blame, as it can clearly be shown to increase during the industrial age of civilization and not any time in human history before this. It does have some similarities to prehistoric massive volcanic periods but other chemical evidence and current factors rule out volcanoes and other prehistoric uh, periods, uh, you know, as parallels as the main cause in the CO2 levels currently. 
the most extreme corporate climate theory is our government is lying to us to hide that our sun is growing closer or more intense, which can be debunked by talking to actual scientists who observe the sun independent of the government, which I'd like to do more of in addition to water testing, uh, you know, for other environmental uh, causes. But, and, and that would make sense, would make no sense for the branches of government like the EPA or the National Park Service or the Pentagon to give false support for environmentalists because most of the government is controlled by corporate interests and they don't benefit. So those corporations do not benefit by the belief in environmentalism. So my argument there is, you know, this minor theory falls apart completely because there's no benefit for the people that want to pollute the world more to gain capital, to gain money, uh, to, to, to actually believe in environmentalism. Now, you know, you could, so then I'll get into the greenwashing. So corporate greenwashing, in other words, whitewashing, or basically saying that you believe in climate change, but not actually wanting to do anything about it is not what interests people who care about the quality of life for all animals and humans, nor even, I would argue, probably the military, who takes the, th the threats of climate change seriously due to the causes of wars, war and wars that are tied into natural conditions like resources, property, shelter, food, water, and all the economics related to environmental issues. The money being made by scientists or environmentalists like Al Gore or, you know, who you could name the most famous ones currently still pales in total compared to the profits of fossil fuel polluters, large companies. So the theory of profit motive causing scientists en masse to lie about climate data seems bunk and, and falls apart to me as well. The debate is over for rational thinkers. But corporate socialism versus democratic socialism, that debate is just beginning for a world run and terrorized by elite capitalists and those greedily climbing that ladder defending pollution. Thanks for listening, and uh, may this God be with you.